I want you to remember, back on Tuesday's lesson, we introduced this idea uh, of resisted motion and we had a look at um, swimmers and cyclists that are resisted by the medium that they're traveling through. If you had a look at the exercise, you would have noticed there are some situations where maybe it's not the medium, um, but it's friction, for example, or like putting on the brakes in, in your car um, that can you know behave essentially like a resistance force. And I, I should point out right now, by the way, um, you'll go onto Canvas, um, you know, shortly this morning to have a look at the assigned questions in the calendar as usual. Um, but something I didn't put an announcement for because I assume, and correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, by the way, I assume several of you are kind of inundated by announcements and emails and all the rest. Um, I didn't decide to put another one in, but if you look at our, you know, outline page where you got the Zoom link for this morning, um, you will have noticed that I put up a series of videos um, on, uh, what's it called? It's one of the questions in the assigned exercise and it's a, a plane that lands and then it starts breaking in a couple of different ways and that's the resistance force that it experiences. So I um, unpacked that question. There are some sort of curveballs in there that are quite important, which I didn't cover in Tuesday's lesson. So please make sure you have a look at that. I think the example will be instructive for you. Now we kind of flagged on Tuesday that we were looking at horizontal resisted motion because it's in a way, it's simpler. You don't have to think about gravity, which uh, is, is kind of an important force to take into account. But now we're going to plow right into that. We're going to think about vertical resisted motion. And as you can imagine, just like with swimming and cycling, the examples I gave before, there are some situations where if you don't take, uh, say, air resistance into account in a vertical um, situation, well, you pull the parachute and then you just drop like a rock. So thankfully, parachutes um, are one of the situations where air resistance is so significant, well, it will save a life and let you land. Um, there are also some really memorable examples of what happens when you take away air resistance. Um, there's a video, I'm gonna post the link in the chat later, not now, because there you'd watch it because it's super interesting. Um, but the uh, physicist Brian Cox did this amazing experiment uh, in uh, an enormous vacuum chamber that uh, I think NASA uses for some of its testing. Uh, it's huge and they, they suck all the air out of it and then they suspend a bowling ball and a feather from the ceiling of the uh, vacuum chamber and then they hit release. And because all of the air has been taken out, uh, it doesn't behave like you would normally expect a bowling ball and a feather to behave. It behaves like this. And it almost looks like it's not real, actually, when you see it. It's like, was this computer generated? But sure enough, they set the release and this, um, this footage is in real time and it's quite astonishing, even though we know that this should be what happens all the way back from Galileo's famous experiment, um, but it is still really weird and counterintuitive to actually see it in person. So, um, we've mentioned that vertical resistive motion is a little bit trickier because you've got to think about gravity. So let's talk about that now. If you haven't already made the heading, do make it vertical resisted motion and then make a little subheading under that. And I want to think about the difference between up and down in a vertical resisted motion setting. Okay. Now, when we think about um, resistance, and let's just talk about air resistance for now um, because, or, or sort of the medium resistance, this would be the same, you know, traveling through water and all that kind of thing. Resistance is going to exert some kind of force on you, right? Now remembering that force equals mass times acceleration, um, I'm just gonna write down mass here because that's going to be included. And the whole idea here, I even flagged this right at the beginning of mechanics, is that the faster you go, good morning, um, the faster you go, the more that medium will push back against you, right? Um, you know, physically speaking, you're just ramming into more particles, more molecules of air or water or whatever it is, the faster you're going, right? So we're going to be proportional to uh, some kind of, um, you know, quantity of the velocity, right? So that proportion we often write as a K where K is some kind of constant. Um, you will frequently see that it's just multiplied by the velocity. So uh, occasionally they will say it's the square of the velocity. So say in the parachute situation over here, that parachute so effectively slows you down that um, if you're going fast, then the resistance against you will be in proportion to the square of that because there's so much um, area slowing you down. The most important thing here is remember, 
um, it's resisting your velocity, right? So if you're going to be moving, say, in the positive direction, then the resistance force will be acting in the negative direction, and vice versa. If you were moving, if your velocity is in the negative direction, then your resistance is going to be in the positive direction. So to capture that, you know, to make sure that we get whatever is the opposite of the sign of the velocity, we just slap a minus sign out the front. And I hope this rings a bell from simple harmonic motion. You might recall, you don't need to write this down because you've got it um, nestled somewhere in your book. If you were thinking about the differential equation for um, simple harmonic motion, we would say it's something like this, right? Uh, obviously, we could alter it if we had a different center of motion. It'd be x minus x naught, something like that. Um, but in this case here, it's like, well, if you're displaced off to, say, the left, then this negative sign means your force, uh, your acceleration, is going to be acting towards the right and, and vice versa, right? So that's what we're getting in this situation. But, and now this is the important part, and this is what we need to think about in the um, next few questions we're going to do together. Gravity's, you've got to consider it differently when you're going up versus when you're going down, right? So if, for example, I'm just going to put a big curly brace here because I'm going to think about two different situations. If you are um, starting from the ground, and then you, you know, say like a rocket, you know, it, it forces you, it shoots you up, right? Um, or just like a ball that you project through the air, okay? Um, the Resistance in the medium, if you're traveling upward, it's going to be acting downward. No big deal. This, this equation captures that, even that's like a V squared or like that, right? But the gravity is also going to be slowing you down. So in such a situation, that force of gravity is acting against you. So in that situation, it would be minus G, right? Uh, or minus MG because I'm thinking about the force and not just the acceleration, right? But if we are thinking about the opposite end, you know, you reach the, you know, the top of where you can go, the highest you can reach, and then, you know, what comes up, uh, what goes up must go down, come down, you know, uh, so long as you don't have extra thrust taking you out of the atmosphere. In such a situation, it is convenient to think about that situation as, you know, having the um, downward direction, the direction you're traveling, thinking about that as positive. Um, it just makes all of our equations much easier to deal with, less minus signs and all the rest. We've done this several times. So under such a situation, um, when we think about this as the sort of upward journey, what we would do is we would redefine the situation as downward being positive. So this is the direction you're now moving in, which means that the force of gravity is now assisting. It's actually accelerating you faster. And so you would actually think of gravity, oopsie daisy, why'd I write an M? You would think of gravity as <clears throat> increasing the magnitude. Um, that's the direction the force is going. It's with your journey if you are going downward. So this dis difference here, right, means that, and this is not the only way to conceive of the situation. You can come up with a whole bunch of different models that will all uh, articulate and help you solve um, a problem to do with just in motion. This does tend to make our um, this is the simplest way to tackle such problems. And so you're gonna have a different model for um, the upward part of the journey as compared to the downward part of the journey. And you will see the questions kind of unpacking for you. Either they'll just focus on one half of the journey um, or they will say, okay, go up, then pause, redefine everything. Um, and sometimes they will even you know, reset time and all that kind of thing and then head down. So this is my summary for you. When we're thinking about the forces that are acting on an object in vertical resisted motion, okay? Um, if you think about, I flipped my colors around, that was a bit embarrassing. So let's change that to that and change that. Sorry, pedantic. Um, when you think about going upwards, right? You've got gravity and you've got air resistance or the medium's resistance, I keep saying air. It doesn't have to be air, it could be water or something like that viscous fluid of any kind, um, you've got both of them acting against you and slowing you down. So that's why you can see these minus signs here. But when you're going downward, gravity, like I said, is assisting you or it's, yeah, it's trying to make you go faster, right? So that's why you can see it represents a positive, but the um, resistance of the medium is still pushing against you, as you would hope in this kind of parachute situation here, right? So it's going to be slowing you down. That's how we would articulate the forces. Um, if you were thinking about just the acceleration, because we know that F equals MA, um, the only difference is you're just not worrying about mass, right? We've seen this before, um, but you will often see these equations both turn up and it's like, is mass there or is it not, right? In a sense, 
it doesn't matter whether it is there or not because the mass will just be a constant. Um, we're not thinking about relativistic situations where the faster you go, the more mass you have. Um, it's just a constant. So it can actually be captured um, within say this, this K, right? Um, but the simplest way to think about it is if F equals MA and this second row here is just A, then I'm just dividing through by mass, okay?